Chinese General Sun Tzu said know your enemy, and what better way to get inside their head than to be literally eaten alive by them. After all, we haven't read The Art of War, but we reckon there must be a chapter in there somewhere about being swallowed whole because it crops up weirdly often in boss battles in video games. And even weirder, usually turns out to be a winning tactic on your part, where instead of being immediately crushed and slowly digested, you end up bursting out of your foe victorious and more than a little sticky. Here are the bosses that you killed from the inside out. Ew. Uh, special hat tip to commenter Braindead for the suggestion and beware spoilers for the following games. Foxes are perhaps the wiliest and most cunning animals to also eat regularly out of bins. So it's no surprise that when Fox McCloud goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with a house-sized enemy, he's not afraid to deploy unconventional tactics to confound his foes. A prime example can be found in Star Fox Adventures, when Fox and his talking Triceratops sidekick Tricky make their way to the lair of insect-dinosaur hybrid beast Galdon. Upon arrival, the team discover that Galdon holds in its claw the legendary Spellstone, the object Fox has been searching for, for reasons we would remember if our memories of the game weren't completely clouded by white-hot hatred for Tricky. He knows the planet well, and I'm sure he's shown you his sidekick skills. Oh yeah, I forgot about those. Come on, Fox! We'll make a great team! Once the boss battle begins, Fox expertly analyzes his enemy's weakness, a glowing weak spot on its rear end, at which point he is, uh, eaten alive, the strategic genius. <laughs> Rather than being chewed into vulpine mints, Fox finds himself in Galdon's body, which is alarmingly lacking in vital organs, but does feature the spellstone, trapped in a uvula-looking appendage. Buckle up, Galdon, because this is probably going to be about as painful as it looks. Dealing enough damage to the uvula causes Fox to be vomited up, a sentence that, if video games were never invented, would probably never have been said aloud, and that would have been fine. What? You'd really think Galdon would learn its lesson, but moments later, it swallows Fox again for a final round of appendage battering. <laughs> Fox makes a comedic getaway, but Galdon is not so lucky and dies painfully, possibly because a fox ran amok inside of him, or possibly because it just realised it has no heart or lungs or organs. On the plus side, with the spellstone finally in hand, Fox can finally do, uh, whatever it was he was planning on doing? We're not sure exactly. Was it kill Tricky? Can you find any blue mushrooms? I'm feeling real tired. Another! <laughs> Tricky! It's said that discretion is the better part of valour, and in Gears of War 2, that means cheesing it when the F-off massive worm with giant teeth shows up. Right, when that. Unfortunately for Marcus Phoenix and his company of cog gym bros, rookie Carmine doesn't get this simple rule, delaying their escape and causing their copter to get swallowed whole by a humongous rift worm. Can't believe we made it! Carmine! 
Thanks a lot, Carmine. Now we have to live inside this giant worm. Probably isn't even a gym in here. But Marcus, not being one to lie down, probably because all the guns on his back wouldn't let him, cooks up a plan to take down the Riftworm from the inside. And thus begins a great odyssey, or should I say Odyssey, as the gang make their way to the creature's heart through a variety of deadly and for sure stinky internal hazards, such as giant grinding teeth, acid, and toxic fumes inside the creature's intestines. Ugh, this place stinks like ass, man. Ass? More like cheese and rotten. Told you him ass. There's even a bunch of creatures that crawl out of nowhere to try and take you out like an educational video about antibodies, killing rookie Carmine before you can reach him. It's Carmine! Oh no, not Carmine. Who's gonna screw up and get us swallowed by a worm now? But that's not the worst of it. To avoid being crushed by some freshly ingested city architecture, you have to chainsaw your way through membranes. And... Am I reading this right? Shooting sphincters until they open for you. Concentrate fire on the opening! It's opening! I am. I am reading that right. You do eventually make it to the heart and not so delicately cut the all-important blood vessels connecting it, except that does nothing, as anyone who knows anything about Riftworm anatomy could tell you. Wait. I still hear a heart beating. Oh, Turns out the Riftworm doesn't just have one heart, but three, most of which are surrounded by yet more gross locust beasties. Once that final artery is cut, the Riftworm bursts to the surface, defeated, letting the cogs burst free, presumably with the unspoken understanding that none of them will ever speak of this again. <laughs> but we'll always remember you, Carbine. Carmine. Who? <laughs> Heart of Darkness is a game full of terrors, like this nightmare creature. Hang on, Whiskey, I'm coming! Absolutely terrifying. That's the main character! Oh, God! Truth be told, while the 1998 cutscene graphics haven't aged very well, they have remained in our darkest memories thanks to all of the horrific deaths that poor Andy faced. <laughs> yep, that's a child screaming as he falls to his death. This game has no chill. There are a lot of unpleasant demises, including Andy being eaten alive by shadow monsters. So we were fearing the worst when this happened. Luckily for Andy, this monstrosity is more interested in his shiny weaponry and hat rather than his easily smushable body. But later in the game, after many more horrific deaths thanks to you no longer having a metal helmet or plasma gun, more alarm bells ring when Andy falls through a hole and lands on a weird looking rock. Ah, it's that monster again, and it swallowed him whole. I hate everything about this. But before a cutscene showing a small child being dissolved by stomach acid can kick in, this monster's morning snack comes back to bite it in the bum, or should we say, laser it through the stomach. Brace yourselves folks, cause this is horrible. <coughs> Hooray! Take that! Wait, does that mean we could have lasered our way out if he'd eaten this the first time round? <coughs> Ah, no, he breaks his spine first in this circumstance. Smart. Well, at least we can say that no children played this game as it was rated an 11 plus. You killed Ares out of your need for vengeance. But this time, retribution finally comes to me, Spartan. Your death will not be a gentle one. 
When you first meet the imprisoned Titan Kronos, you might wonder how you could defeat an enemy the size of a mountain. Also, what's his gym routine like to get so big? Is it farmer's carries? Because I've heard that's a thing. Put such questions out of your mind though, because Kronos is in no mood to chit chat with playable god smashing Spartan Kratos. Instead, he's more in the mood to squash you beneath his stadium sized palms. You are a pitch and deserve to be crushed by God. Despite his best efforts though, Kronos has a hard time even finding you, what with Kratos being roughly the size of an ant in comparison. Show yourself, Kratos. Moreover, Kronos apparently can't feel his tiny enemy crawling up his body, which is bad right now, but probably better in general that he's not aware of quite how many skeletons are living in his skin. You will suffer when my sight returns. Might be worth seeing if there's a cream for that, Kronos. Plus, Kratos might be the size of a bug compared to Kronos, but he's considerably more dangerous. I mean, we may as well just hand control of Earth over to the ants if they ever figure out how to do this. Regardless, it's clear that Kratos isn't shy about stabbing and slicing at any part of Kronos' anatomy that he can get at, which makes the following decision hard to justify. In a shock to literally nobody except Kronos, Kratos, who was so fond of stabbing Kronos on the outside, proceeds to stab Kronos on the inside, now that he's been swallowed. Dragging his fiery blades down the side of Kronos' gullet would already be pretty fatal, you'd think, but hey, I guess Kratos wants to be sure, and we would call this pretty damn sure. Unsurprisingly, bursting out of Cronus' midriff in a gut explosion ends the boss fight, and at this point it's just a formality to pop up to Cronus' enormous bonce and deliver the killing blow. Oh, now we'll never know his workout secrets! Was it burpees, do you think? Because I'm not doing burpees. parenting manual should recommend putting your baby on the back of a dinosaur is the feedback I got from HarperCollins when I submitted the manuscript for my parenting manual. Well, get a load of this, HarperCollins. This exact scenario features in Nintendo classic Yoshi's Island. Upon stumbling across a harmless-looking amphibian, baby-stealing wizard Kamek zaps Yoshi and his passenger baby Mario down to snack size. <laughs> Thus ensues a terrifying game of dodge the stomach acid as Yoshi must avoid corrosive droplets while taking out the enemies that fall in, presumably also shrunk by the weird flying wizard and at this point regretting joining his army. To get out you must turn enough of those enemies into eggs and shoot them at what we can only assume is this thing's uvula, but what it's doing in this frog's stomach is anyone's guess. Repeat this enough and you're unceremoniously pooped out of its butt is what we can only assume based on what little anatomy we can see here and also this frog's shocked expression afterwards. <laughs> The spell wears off. Oh, so they could have just waited? And no way, that would have been worse. No way. Now I'm imagining it. If you've never played Dante's Inferno, the main idea behind it is what if God of War, but somehow even more gross? Take Dante's Inferno's approach to Cerberus, for instance, traditionally depicted as a three-headed dog. Reach this boss as you enter Gluttony, the third circle of hell, however, and you'll quickly discover that, oh my god, that is not a dog. Looks like Admiral Akbar gone wrong. More like Admiral Wackbar, right? Ugh.
This HR Geiger cheese dream does have the traditional three heads, but adds three very big mouths of teeth, and in each head, four additional mouths for a grand total of a, a lot of mouths. The first two heads can be taken care of with some very gymnastic use of your scythe. But the final head is not so easy to take down as you find out when going in for the final kill. Ah! How does it even know I was there? It doesn't have eyes! It just has mouths. But today is not your day to die, and windmilling your scythe around its side its mouth is exactly as effective as you'd think. Sorry Cerberus, but we got a head off. <laughs> oh man, why is no one ever around when I make these zings? Wish Cerberus was still alive. He would love that. People work better when they're given strict time limits, like how I won't start work until I've watched at least 90 minutes of Netflix, and I'm very strict about that. Gotta get my Stranger Things in. Someone who knows all about the efficiency boost that a looming deadline provides is Samus Saran, who can't so much as step foot in a gloomy maze-like space facility without a massive alarm going off and a clock starting to tick down to its total destruction. Self-destruction protocol activated. Little wonder then that it's a ticking clock that gives Samus the edge she needs in the middle of one of her toughest boss battles ever, that against the sinister Queen Metroid in 2010's Metroid Other M. This This fight against the Queen Metroid began several minutes earlier, when the crocodile-like space beast ambushes Samus aboard the bottle ship research vessel, very nearly swallowing her whole. Which, if you've been paying attention to this video, you'll know would have definitely saved us all some time. Alas, Samus remains on the outside of the Metroid Queen for now, which means you, the player, must try to survive while this long-necked space dinosaur hatches Metroids out of its back and tries to roast Samus inside her suit with punishing waves of flame breath. Just when all seems lost and the creature appears to be unkillable, the ticking clock gives Samus the focus she needs to draw courage from the thought of her space friends. Ten. Nine. Or maybe she just remembered she has theatre tickets tonight. Next, Samus takes advantage of the ship unexpectedly decelerating to blast the Queen Metroid right in its guts. Then it's up to you to do the only sensible thing, and by sensible thing we mean grapple into the Queen Metroid's mouth. Which sounds like a bad idea, until you remember that Samus spends 90% of her life curled up in a tiny ball dropping bombs. You can probably see where this is going. I mean, we've heard of indigestion, but this is ridiculous. Oh, sorry, Netflix time again. Steve Harrington, tell me your hair care secrets. Metroid eggs. It can't be. So, those are the video game boss battles that just really made you want to go and have a shower afterwards, because, ew, gross. Can you think of any bosses that you had to really get inside of? just blah <laughs> in order to take them down pop them down in the comments below and uh, we will have a nosy through them but uh, some things for you to nosy through there's some more videos from us did enemies get under your skin well here are the ones that got under our skin on outside extra and over on outside xbox what other things do you delve inside of dungeons and here are things you find in every dungeon and subscribe <laughs>